All right, guys, welcome back to our Kingdom Hearts leveling series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at three methods towards quickly leveling up to level 99 in Kingdom Hearts 2. Unlike Kingdom Hearts 1, there isn't any annoying prerequisites to get fast XP gains here. So by the time you've finished the game's main story, you'll be ready to start grinding. We're going to make use of the Experience Boost ability, which is going to boost XP gains by 100% when Sora's health is below 50%. We can get two Experience Boosts, boosting XP gains by 200%. The first one is within the abilities list and the second is a part of the Gullwing Keyblade. For all three of these methods, ensure that Sora's health is below 50% to reap the additional XP. If you have Donald or Riku in your party, be sure to turn off any of their healing abilities as they will heal Sora if he gets to critical health. I recommend putting Magnet, Thunder and Reflect into your shortcut list with mainly using Magnet and Thunder to quickly take care of the enemies. Now in the vanilla version of Kingdom Hearts 2, the there used to be a really great XP method where you would go to Pride Rock and you would spam Magnet on the infinitely respawning Propeller Heartless. You could pretty much just stay here and spam Magnet the entire time and get quick XP. This has been removed, unfortunately, from the Final Mix version. The first two methods I'm going to show you guys here are recommended for when you first start XP grinding, as by the time you finish the game, you should be around level 50. The reason why I say don't take on the main XP method straight away is depending on what weapons you chose at the beginning beginning of the game, which determine the order in which you receive abilities, you might not have once more or second chance. I would recommend using these two methods here until you have once more and second chance. That being said, these two runs are totally viable to use in order to get to level 99. First is the Twilight Town method. You're going to want to start in Namine's White Room, walk out the door and lower your health from the Gambler Nobody. There are spawns here on the upper walkway, the staircase and the ground floor. Take care of them and be sure to go into this room here where you'll come across another three gambler spawns. Remember for groups of enemies be sure to use magnet and to quickly finish them off use thunder. From here go back into the main mansion room and make your way to the basement entrance. Be careful in this room as there is a dragoon nobody which attacks as soon as it spawns. Make your way into the computer room and then into the next basement room. Here you'll have a few spawns of samurai nobodies. Once dealing with them then walk into the basement hallway. Here you'll have a lot of dancer spawns. This is the most in the game. Once dealing with them, walk into the pod room and then walk back into the hallway and reset the run backwards. Kingdom Hearts 2 does room resetting a little bit differently to Kingdom Hearts 1 where it actually takes a couple of room resets in order for the enemy spawns to come back. So by the time you get to the basement entrance, all enemy respawns will be reset. This Twilight Town run is actually really good for synthesis materials, mainly looking at the items you get from the gamblers and dancers as there's a ton of these spawns for this run, if you are looking to get Twilight Shards and Twilight Stones, this is absolutely the best method to do so. The next run here is the Mysterious Tower, starting at the ground level and working your way all the way up to the top to Yen Sid's room to the save point to then reset back to the world map and start over again. This is also an equally fast method, though just because of the additional synthesis bonus that you're going to reap from the Twilight Tower method, I would probably suggest that one over this one. However, there are more Dragoon spawns in this run netting you more Dense and Serenity gems, along with five Berserker spawns, which will net you Dense and Serenity crystals. Berserkers are definitely one of the more worrying enemies to take care of during these XP runs, so whenever you come across them, be sure to use Magnet. It's also worth noting too that you shouldn't use the Berserker's reaction command against it to kill it. For some reason, all of the other nobody reaction commands used against them will still count for the additional XP bonus, but the Berserkers simply won't. So so try your best not to use the Berserker RC if you want to get the additional XP gains. One other thing to keep in mind about the experience boost ability is you only get the additional XP when Sora finishes off the enemy. If any of your party members are the ones to finish off the enemy, you'll get the standard amount of XP. So for the main XP run for Kingdom Hearts 2 and by far the most popular is the world that never was, starting at the very top and working your way down to the entrance of the castle. This is obviously a much longer run compared to the first two I showed you, but definitely consists of the most nobodies and the most varied amounts. In general, this is a great way to synthesis farm if you are looking for dense and twilight materials. For this run, I would suggest switching out Riku for Donald. The reason why I say this is 
Riku is a bit more of an aggressive fighter and the likelihood of him finishing off enemies is much higher than Donald. The main reason why I say use the other XP runs before you go to this one, ensuring that you have once more and second chance is mainly to do with the Berserkers, the Sorcerers and the Snipers. Especially the Sorcerers, there aren't that many Sorcerer spawns throughout this run, only a total of two. However, they can attack independently, even if they are stunned with Magnet. These guys also just in general deal a lot of damage, so it is advised that you do have once more a second chance. Do know though that if you do die during an XP run, which you probably will in the beginning, your progress is always saved when you enter a new area. So any of the XP that you gained before walking into an area, don't worry, you won't lose it. And also when you're doing this run, don't forget to walk into these two portals as these are also additional areas with more nobody spawns. This is without a doubt the fastest method towards getting to level 99 in KH2 Final Mix. The other two methods are still completely viable and still net incredibly fast XP gains so long as your health is below 50% in order to reap the benefits of experience boost. Once you get to the entrance of the castle, use this save point here to revert back to the world map and restart your run. And that's it. Those are the fastest methods towards getting level 99 in KH2, which you'll definitely want to be at for the post game content. Hopefully this has helped those of you who aren't familiar with the XP methods of this game. Thank you guys so much for tuning on in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with everything that's going on here. Check out my other social media platforms and as always a big thank you to my wonderful patrons. I appreciate your support. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day and we'll talk real soon.